I think it's time for some closing remarks from a user suspect for the Creative Europe program, but I think also head of unit. Walter? Yeah, I know Katrin cannot be with us. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you very much for being here with us. Uh, it's fantastic. It's the first time that uh, we can see, look at us in the, in the eyes. Actually, it didn't work yesterday. We tried with several of you. Actually, it was in Paris for a meeting with, uh, with the desks. So it's, uh, thank you very much again. Um, Alessandra said, no, this is, our, this is our family. This is how we are building together the European cultural space. We are very happy that with the new programs, actually, we have 36 networks, more than before, possibly 37 because we have a record, but okay, that's life. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> we are enlarging the family, and that's very important for all of us. It's very important, particularly now, no? Why, uh, why the Green Deal is so important also for culture? Why do we need a cultural dimension? Well, we need culture because wherever there is people, we need culture, okay? But we also need because uh, we have to understand the scale of the challenge, just to grasp really the scale, which is almost impossible because we can read the figures, we understand what the figures mean, but in practice, what does it mean climate change? But by the way, it applies also to all the big challenges. What does it mean uh, artificial intelligence? We still need culture for the meaning, but we need the artist to make us really understand, to put it graspable to us. So that's ex ex something that we have absolutely to do. We need to do it because it's important. And it's something that we can do, actually, by the way, because in the previous program, we mapped out all the projects, the cooperation projects, that cover some of our important topics, like sustainability, like gender equality, like digitization. And you see that we are already doing a lot of things that apply to beauty, sustainable, and, of course, inclusion, but also meaning, actually. That's what they do. They put the meaning in all these things. So be it about uh, awareness raising, be it about environmental impact uh, on the sector, be it about what we're doing for cities, cities are absolutely important, and the rural divide, why not? Be it what we're doing about new visions for the future, which is really probably we need. That's something why we need culture, that's why we need a new European warehouse. That's why, in particular, networks can help us, no? Because, well, because we have thousands of organizations, and we cannot do it from Brussels, probably it cannot be done from any member states, it cannot be done at any local level, but you can do it. <laughs> we can do it together, so thank you very much. For today, it's just about talks, and we will have drinks, but we will expect a lot out of you. So thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. So, um, closing words. Uh, Catherine Magnon sends her your greetings. <laughs> and um, I'm going to pronounce a few thoughts on her behalf. Uh, cultural policy, because we are from the Cultural Policy Unit. So how is cultural policy done? Ideally, just like that, actually. So uh, we have been here today with um, people from the member states, because actually we have here also uh, people from the council a member states expert group on artists' working conditions because the new European Bauhaus, the networks, cultural and creative sectors, they have to live also somehow to be able to make a living. And that's what we are we were discussing today. So we have here Heidi Meisnitzer, who is the co-chair of the, the artist working con uh, conditions uh, working group of member states. And we have different members of, uh, of the group. So we have member states here. Heidi is also in the CAC, the Cultural Affairs Council, so we have here the Commission, the Council, the Networks, Cultural and Creative Sectors, the Punks, the, <laughs> the Hubs, the Family, uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, so that's great. So that's how cultural policy is done ideally, and not only in theory, also in practice, because, I mean, <laughs> admittedly, what, I mean, how many times did we take ideas from whatever some people from uh, the family, you know, had and we converted it into cultural policy documents or projects. I, I everything. I, I never invented anything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so this is also why, actually, you can see now culture, heritage, everything. You can see it in lots of programs because now it's in Creative Europe, of course, it's the key program. But then you also have it in Horizon Europe. There is a whole cluster, and the new kick, uh, the 23rd of. Uh, June, actually, uh, very soon, it's going to be announced the winner, and many of you, I know, I heard, uh, are part of uh, some of the consortia of the KIC for CCIs, the Knowledge and Innovation Community, for the ones who are wondering what that means. It means a lot of money, a really lot of money. 
Then there is also a, uh, another program, which is the first time the EU is actually allowed to take money and the financial markets to, like in a Keynesian way, finance this, the, the sectors. It's the Recovery and Resilience Program. So uh, here we have um, Maria Iglesias with us, who is uh, dealing with that issue, and also um, Culture Action Europe. Um, you have done a huge work to find out what actually has been, what's hap what happened with all that money, yeah? Gabriele, I mean, you have been doing, I think last summer, we all during summer when we were at the beach, he was sitting there with his sunglasses, <laughs> studying all these uh, programs, right? He hasn't changed, he hasn't changed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, it comes out that uh, I think it was 2.3% of all the programs go to culture and creative sectors, yep. which translates into more than 10 mil billion, billion, 10 billion, as Maria informed us today, right, Maria? So, um, a huge amount. And uh, the question is now, of course, how can this money actually go to the benefit to the cultural and creative sector people? I mean, how, how can it arrive? Because uh, there's so much money. So we are counting on you all to knock on the doors, to claim it of your local authority, regional authority, national authority, you know, to say, you know, there is this money, so how can, you know, how, how can it trickle down? So, uh, yeah, in this sense, that's why we're all here together. Bautopia, that's the topic. Utopia, I mean, Bauhaus, it's, it's not only about green and everything that was mentioned already. It's also about the social dimension, how to make artists live, how to reach out to communities. And I think here, Trans Europa Al and uh, Creative Hubs and uh, all the other networks are super important because that's what you're doing, to reach out to the people who otherwise uh, cannot be there. Then also uh, that Ukraine is part, central part of the Bauhaus Festival. I think uh, I heard that uh, many people already cried uh, in the interventions that were made today and yesterday because, of course, it's really serious. And you know, people were also thinking of not doing the Bauhaus Festival because of uh, the situation. But instead, we try, you try to integrate it, which is really good. In this sense. Um, yeah, that's all. So, <laughs> thank you, and that's for the other thing. <laughs> and, uh, of course, thank, thank you to the organizers yeah. of the whole thing. Absolutely, let's see you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for being here. And always remember that culture moves civilization. And that's very important. So let's have drinks. Yeah. <laughs>